All right. Thank everyone for, uh, we thank everyone collectively for their patience in us getting started. We had some things to discuss a little earlier that went over, so our apologies. Hopefully everybody had a good eclipse day. And with that, I call this meeting to order. Roll call, Mrs. Wyden, Ms. Widener. Dr. Campley? Here. Mr. Fountain? Here. Mr. Keenan? Here. Mr. Liggett? Here. Mr. McKinney? Here. Mrs. Sadler? Here. Mr. Saylor? Here. Dr. Weston? Ms. White? Here. And we will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silent reflection. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 1.05, Mrs. Sadler, would you read the Perkiomen Valley mission statement? The mission of the Perkiomen Valley School District is to cultivate an inclusive community of learners empowered to grow intellectually, socially, and emotionally. Thank you, Mrs. Sadler. 1.06, it's the um, approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So move. A second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. 1.07. Approval of the minutes. May I have a motion to approve the minutes? So move. Second. Mr. Thank you. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. 1.08 is a special recognition. Mr. McKinney, I uh, turn it over to you and Dr. Russell. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming out this evening as we recognize quite a few students for their accomplishments in the district this year. Mr. McKinney and I will recognize several groups, and we're going to begin with um, our boys' wrestling achievements. So congratulations to Carter Euchre, freshman Luke Knox, and sophomore Max Tansini, named District 1 North Wrestling Champions. We truly commend all of your hard work and look forward to following your efforts next year. No easy sport. Carter, congratulations. Way to go. Max, congratulations. Luke, way to go. Dr. Russell, I apologize. Is Tara here? So we can do pictures? We'll get them. Oh, he's gone back there. Thank you. Thank you. So, gentlemen, thank you again. Uh, congratulations on your accomplishments. If you could sit tight for just a few minutes, we'll go through a couple more, and then we'd like to get your picture. Great. Congratulations. Outstanding. All right. Next, we are honored to acknowledge the basketball achievements of juniors Grace Galbavi, Quinn Bodinger, and Julian Sadler. Each of these phenomenal players surpassed the 1,000 point scoring milestone. Congratulations to each of them. <laughs> and both teams this year really had great seasons, so congratulations on that as well. Grace, congratulations. Great job. Quinn, great job. Julian, great job. Congratulations. And Julian is the son of Mrs. Trina Sadler here, who's seated on our board. So congratulations for that, too. <laughs> Very nice. 
Um, and really, the boys and the girls teams both were a lot of fun to watch this year and both had great seasons. So on top of that, the 1,000 points is fantastic. So way to go. Um, our next honorees this evening, our next honoree, excuse me, is Griffin Crothers, who successfully defended his PAC champion title in diving. In addition, he qualified early in the season for districts, finishing 11th overall. And Griffin served as the captain of the swim team. Great job, Griffin. We have a lot to be proud of when it comes to our athletics, so um, look forward to taking some pictures in a few minutes. Our last group that we want to recognize this evening represents members of the Helping Hands Club at Evergreen Elementary. The club, under the guidance of Mrs. Laura Christie and Mrs. Beth Bickle, along with Mrs. Lynn Sabatino, serves as a beacon of positive change in our community. Dedicated student volunteers meet before school hours to choose plan and implement a variety of service projects throughout the year. Not only are members of the club providing invaluable contributions and touching the lives of many in the community, they are also cultivating a sense of responsibility, teamwork, and compassion. These values, essential for personal growth, help to lay the foundation in developing engaged and empathetic members of society. The Helping Hands Club is excited to continue its efforts to inspire change, foster kindness, and create a brighter future for all. Join us in recognizing the following students. Maddie Acker. <laughs> Violet Tachini. Roz Crumlick. Roz, congratulations. Good job. Hannah Germana. Right here. We'll save her certificate and cookie. Scarlett Hones. She's not here either. Okay. How about Hayden Jones? Hayden, way to go. Nice Thank job. You. Allison Young. <laughs> Jung. Thank you, Allison. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Allison. <laughs> we have Reagan Castori. How about Salupa Kasturi? <laughs> Salapu. Salapu. Sorry. Thank you. Congratulations. Marley Kersinger? No? Okay. Jamie Kwan? Scarlett Rodriguez. <laughs> Leah Roth. Congratulations, Leah. Simonvi Salupa. <laughs> Is that your sister? Yes. No, no. I think she took the one off of her sister. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Simon B. Really, congratulations to the advisors and to these students for the work that you're doing. All of you recognized this evening make Perkiomen Valley proud, so thank you. And congratulations, athletes. Uh, we'll take a five minute recess and we'll go out and take some pictures.
but all is well. Uh, with that, I reconvene the meeting and we move on to 1.09, which is comments on any topic. Um, as always, uh, comment is afforded to any member of the community for three minutes. Um, name and municipality need to be stated. And um, if the demeanor of uh, if the presentation of what you plan to say is not appropriate for a classroom or a work environment, I ask you that you uh, make an accommodation to um, refrain from that type of energy. And if you need to take a time out, go out to the lobby, come back, um, that would you would be afforded uh, once you collect your thoughts and come back to speak for your three minutes. And with that, I move on to registered comments. Um, I see Kim Mayers. Thank you. Um, Kim Mayer, Skip Back Township. So I would like to, I mentioned this last week, talk a little bit more about the tax rate increase that is being, um, that is out there right now. If you look at the slide that was in the financial um, presentation that Mr. Weaver put up for us, the lowest tax rate we've had in the last seven years is 1% increase the highest rate in the last seven years that we've had is a 2.73. Last year, when we instituted um, SPOs and vehicles, that was a 2.63. I sat here last week and Mr. Weaver, which he's not here and he does a fantastic job. This is nothing, this is not a slam on him, but I did not hear many, hardly any comments from board members asking why such an increase. Yes, I am well aware that there are state mandates, federal mandates, special education mandates. Of course, that's all out there. Historically, in the last seven years, we have not been above a 2.73 tax increase. I have a lot of concerns with that. Um, for one thing, we are seeing an increase in uh, families that are coming into the district or are currently in the district that have more financial need. So now I would like, and it, you know, board meetings are supposed to be public. Maybe they're private emails going back and forth, one-on-one, -on -one, that's fine, and there's something going on behind the scenes that isn't being talked about, and I don't mean that in a nefarious way. I mean a school board member interacting with administration and asking hard questions, but I'm very concerned. I didn't hear any hard questions, and I didn't hear anybody say, I'm a little concerned at this tax rate. Our district has always been about all and trying to encompass what does all mean, and that is fantastic. But if we are pushing families out of our district because our tax rate hikes are too high, they always go up, it's a difficult reality. I get that. But I just am asking board leadership in particular to work um, diligently with the administration on seeing if there are things, if you can bring this rate down. And if you're fine with it, that's fine. And if the school board is fine with the tax rate of 3.43, that's fine. I'm just asking that you are going in eyes wide open to what you are approving for the taxpayer base in this district. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is there anyone else? Seeing none, we'll move on to section two, 2.01, a student liaison report. Our students are here this evening. Mr. Kenworthy and Ms. Tremba. Good evening. Um, we hope you all had a nice weekend and enjoyed the eclipse today and are ready to get back into the swing of things. Um, spring is just around the corner, which means there's a lot of exciting events for our students that we want to highlight. Yeah, so today was the solar eclipse, uh, occurred for the first time since 2017. Across the district, students of all ages were given special glasses and went outside to view the eclipse in action. This is a great experience and opportunity to learn for our students. We'd like to thank the staff for making it possible. Um, the PV High School, Middle School East, and Middle School West theater departments all recently put on their annual musicals. They performed The Prom, Moana, and Oliver, respectively. 
They all had great shows, and we'd like to congratulate the participants. The high school hosted its inaugural Holly Festival this past Sunday, led by the International Cultures Club. The event celebrated Hindu culture and customs and welcomed all community members. And looking forward, there's three upcoming events that we'd like to highlight. So first, on the morning of April 25th, there's going to be a brand new celebration for our seniors here at the high school. All seniors and their parents and guardians are invited to celebrate National Decision Day in the stadium from 8.30 to 10.30 a.m. We'd like to celebrate all of our seniors and the decisions they've made, whether it's going into the workforce, trade schools, colleges, military, et cetera. And we're excited for this event to become a new tradition at PV that celebrates everyone. The PVHS track team will be hosting its annual Ron Livers Viking Invitational this Saturday the 13th. The meet honors former coach Ron Livers and brings in lots of fundraising for the team. We'd love if you could come out and support the athletes. And finally, prom is fastly approaching for our junior and senior students. It will be held on April 20th, and we'd, all, we'd like to wish them a fun, safe, and memorable night. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so sorry. I, my mind started to wander thinking about, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I have no president's report. We'll move on to the superintendent's report. Do you have anything, Dr. Russell? I do have one really quick item, if I might, Ms. White. I, I added a part two to my oh, report, faces. and honestly, <laughs> they, they really are cute. I mean, so we had our students, as our student reps mentioned today, out and viewing the clips, and I thought that I would- That was out at Schwanksville. This was out at Schwanksville. Yep. I'll, I'll show you a quick little video. They, they were pretty excited, and as, as um, Mr. Kenworthy mentioned, it was a real learning experience along with Ms. Tremba for our students, and there was a lot of viewing going on, and very appreciative of the opportunity for our kids and our staff, so thank you. Thank you for adding that. Um, that was happy to see. Mr. Subers, do you have a solicitor's report no tonight? Report. No Anything report. Anything to offer at all? Um, no, Nothing. I don't. No, okay. <laughs> Board and district committee reports. I don't think that there's been anything in the last week. Up, oh, Mr. Saylor, go ahead. Yeah, um, I know last week I pulled policy 109 or po yeah policy 109 off of consent, so I thought it would probably be best to talk about it in the committee section because I don't have problems with the actual verbatim or vernacular of policy 109. Just wanted to understand how policy is being enacted in the school district. So I would actually prefer to have that during govern that conversation during governance, if that's okay. Um, so we can move through a little bit more uh, less, excuse me? Where? Because it's not about the verbiage of policy 109. So are you looking to have a discussion from administration as to how policy is being enacted? Is that what you're looking for? Mm -hmm. Would you like to speak to that now, Dr. Russell? I'm happy to speak to that because I'm, I'm aware that um, uh, Mr. Saylor and I have had a previous conversation about a question that emerged. and. The policy is now active after the board takes action on the item tonight. And as part of the policy language now, administration and our staff are expected to recognize when a graphic novel has a depiction or an illustration of any kind of sexual content, and that book is then prohibited from being a part of our library. And recently, a book came in and was downloaded as an ebook. We subscribe to ebooks. We don't pick them, they are automatically downloaded. However, prior to that, our librarians do receive a list and they review that list. And then if there is a book that's downloaded or scheduled to be downloaded, we can, we can say, hey, we don't want that book as part of our collection. And recently there was a book that was included in that download that once policy 109 as revised would be approved and become active, it would not qualify. And that book has since been pulled. So that's how the policy is upheld. The policy is upheld by really keeping a close eye on what books are coming in, especially through that ebook methodology and the subscription, as well as you know now when books are being recommended for purchase moving forward, there are additional eyes that oversee and just some checks and balances to make sure that we are reviewing some of the additional information that is now available 
about library books that we would select. In addition to some of the Newbery Award winners and New York Times bestsellers and um, some of those other organizations, professional organizations that we look to, there are additional administrators that are contributing so that um, we are all moving in the right direction and upholding the policy. And the language and the implementation, as you mentioned, will go into effect tonight after we vote on the um, revisions made. That's correct. Yeah. Correct. So what I'm trying, the question is what I wanted to know is when did the book get into the, to the library resource? It was after November, but prior, it was after November. So sometime between November and March 22nd, the book was added to the resource. And then when was it removed? Was it removed after my email? It was removed two days after my email. Was my email the reason the book was removed? I don't know that for certain. That's a good question. Um, I certainly had a conversation about that. And again, as I mentioned in our exchange, librarians typically review the lists. There wasn't a lot of time in this particular case. And again, we're much more aware now, once this policy goes into place, that that needs to be something that's considered. So the list comes through, and then very soon after, the books were downloaded. So it was a timing thing. Well, OK. You've certainly created a greater awareness about how we need to be aware of that timing now that this policy will most likely be approved tonight. Correct. But what, what I'm trying to understand is how the book so the book's gender queer. So the book was removed two days after I sent out an email. But it was an ebook, so it was available not in the physical library, but in it was available as an you know digital a digital form Correct. that could be downloaded. Right. What part of policy 109 had that book removed? What part of the potentially future 109, if it gets it's placed a graphic on today? Novel. It's a graphic novel. It has a depiction apparently in it. So will other graphic novels be removed then? If, if there is sexual content graphically illustrated in the books, they will be reviewed. And if they aren't upholding Policy 109 once it's approved, yes. OK. May I ask a follow-up question? The, go ahead. Thank you. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Obviously, we took, you took a, an action here in, in removing that book regardless of whether or not 109 changes tonight, which it would be anticipated it is, this is still administration and the librarians taking the lead and choosing to do this. This didn't, you didn't need anything extra from us or the board in order to take this action, correct? Not necessarily, but, but clearly because of all the conversation and some of the concerns that have been expressed, it is blinking bright on the radar screen. And our librarians have, in the past, removed digital books that have been downloaded, maybe not for this particular reason, but for other reasons. They have the authority to do that, and they've been doing that as part of their practice and their weeding. Or just once they see a book that they haven't selected come through that maybe they don't believe is appropriate for their library or their collection, then they take that action. So you're right. Not they're essentially doing their job with a hyper awareness correct. of the situation. That's correct. Yes, that's accurate. So, so you're yeah. okay with the book being removed? Yes. It's not banning it? No, because it's the it's the librarians and the administration making a decision to not bring something into our library. And they didn't select it. Was it was brought into the library. And they, they didn't. and they took an action to correct that. They're well within their power and always have been to make those choices. It's okay. like weeding, the collection. It's not weeding, because weeding has a specific criteria. What I'm trying to understand, it was a question that wasn't answered, is was gender queer removed because of my email? Because the book was available sometime between November 2nd and March 21st, the book was available at Perkiman Valley. I sent an email on March 22nd, March 24th, it's no longer there. We don't have this current policy yet. I'm trying to understand the process of how that ebook got removed. <coughs> Especially since some of us went through months of being called book banners, and now we're removing books without anyone filling out an AR form for a book to be removed or challenged. So, so one of the comments that was shared in the conversation was that there was the impression that maybe there is some detailed oversight on your part, because 
the books had recently been downloaded. I don't know the exact time. I can find that out, but I don't know the exact time. So I know that the timeline was pretty short, at least that's my impression, during the conversation. Oh. In addition, after all of these conversations, yeah. the librarian doesn't want that book in this collection. No, I understand, but it was in the collection for over a month. The, so, the, the main well, can I, the, the can main I interject really quickly here? So, Mr. Saylor, respectfully, we went through that policy this between yeah. these last several policy meetings, we belabored 109 to really make the language reflect what our community that expectation was. No, I was. agree with that. That's just fine. Let me, just let me finish. In that in that time period between policies first read and second read, which is going to be approved tonight, you you got you had a gotcha and you dili hold on diligently found a book that slipped through the cracks and you brought it to their attention. But there is going to be, I would I would imagine, a window of time where there's there needs to be a catch-up period, mm -hmm. right? Because now there's a new policy language, which is more diligent, which everybody wanted more restriction on, not banning, restriction based on appropriateness and age-appropriate nature. Mr. Saylor, we went back and forth. We don't, we don't necessarily agree on that, you and I, but we came to a consensus that that's what was appropriate for our school district sure. collectively. Yeah. And I fully support that. So there will be books that in previous conversations this new policy will apply to, but there's going to be a window of time that the librarians are going to have to catch up. That, now, with regards fine. to your ask, your question about, well, did it only happen because I pointed it out, I think that in terms of the timing, the librarians need to have a period of time where there's not a, a, an automatic release. There needs to be a, a, a dam of sorts that holds the books back until they can actually give it the all clear um, and I think that your email did point that out, that that was maybe something that wasn't discussed as a process situation, a process issue during policy committee, yeah. the tangible nature of it. So I guess my question to you is, other than you caught this, which we thank you, I think the administration and the librarians probably thank you. What's my you. question? That's, what's your question? Sure. Precedent. I'm trying to figure out what particular, so that is the most talked about book in the United States for the past 23 months. Why and wasn't it on their radar is what you want to know? No, no. Well, that's, I already know the answer to that. So my, my question is, what precedent of the book pushed 109? Because that will then set the precedent of what other books get weeded out through the policy. That's what I'm curious about. So then that would need to be what they found inappropriate, which I think was not something that they, that was addressed in the communication that I saw between you and Dr. Russell. My understanding is there was a there was an illustration that would violate the updated policy 109 once it was active. Is that inaccurate, Mr. Saylor? So we 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 had this conversation in the policies about 109. Rowan and I, Mr. Keenan and I felt one way about the vernacular in the policy. Other policy members might have felt sounded like they felt different on what someone would be considered pornography or what would be sexual uh, excitement. Um, that's what I'm trying to figure out. But I think where we landed in conversations, my takeaway in policy was that there is a subjective nature to that. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess I would say that my impression and my expectation of our librarians would be at their best discretion. And then if, if their discretion doesn't match someone's else's discretion, then I think that they can still go through the normal process of challenging the book. Right. That would be my impression of, um, of implementing pol the revised policy 109. Because I, I think that there is that, that subjective nature of what's appropriate and what's not. And some things are universally, we would agree that, hey, this isn't right. But then other things would maybe be more gray. So if the judgment call is made by the team of the folks that are reviewing them and it, you don't agree with it, you still would have a prerogative to mm -hmm. challenge it. Not you, but anyone in the community would have the prerogative to go through the normal process. But there should be, I would assume, more oversight and weeding going forward just because of the change language in the policy. Yeah, and, and just, you know, um, Mr. Saylor, to your point, and again, I, I don't know if I'm being redundant or if I'm addressing your question, this section of the policy that indicates, it articulates, that include depictions or representations in whatever form, 
That's what the librarian and I discussed, existed in Gender Queer and the reason it was pulled. She would not have selected that book. It came through, again, automatically as part of that subscription. And that's something that we have to work on, again, with the timing. There needs to be some timing. The list comes out, boom, the books are, are, are downloaded. It comes in automatically to our systems. So we need to work out that time so that we avoid such, such downloads, if you will, remaining then in our collection based upon this new language once it's approved. So did you implement then, um, was there a takeaway from that conversation that there would be a different procedure or protocol with the eBooks that were, that came in? Like I know, for example, you know, on, on student phones or whatever, your child's phone, you can put an age restriction of what's appropriate to see on YouTube, for example, like 14, uh, is there, a, is there a, a button to click on our downloaded ebook subs you know subscription that will help weed through some of those more uh, explicit materials I hear what you're asking now um, I think that they are primarily books that are stated to cover the age range that would be typical for a high school I right. don't know that they get much more specific than that okay and so that was where the subjective nature of it comes in because the grades are you know there's 18 but then there's also Right, so. Well, no, because a student couldn't, prior to the book becoming to, in the catalog, pull up the book on their computer inside the library, in right. the building, because right. there'd be warnings. Right. They, but, but then they were allowed to. So there's, I mean, that's fine. I just wanted to ask the question, trying to understand, because it, it, was, it was here for not like a day, it was here for a while, because a national news source did uh, a write-up on the book in this library a month and a half ago, um, and then the book went away. So was it the book actually taken out or checked out by anybody in the interim of it oh, getting, e falling through the, was, right. I know, but you can see who opens it, I'm sure. So, so I, you know, I have a question about the length of time the book was actually in our ebook access system. I, I don't know that it was that long, that's not the impression I have, but I can clarify that, I can get the, the actual date. My understanding was it was a pretty short time frame, but I'm, I'm not 100% certain on that. Um, the book was downloaded, so I don't believe it exists in print format. It was not in print. Um, it was downloaded as an ebook, and once um, it was reviewed and we had the conversation, it was, it was eliminated. We can eliminate those downloaded books once we realize or review the list and say, hey, we're not sure this is quite right for our school or our collection. We can remove them, but we don't pick them in the beginning. Yeah. So it is a process that we need to now get into sync with as this happens. Do you feel as though the revised language in 109 will help address some of the concerns that you've been voicing all along about this? Or do you still not Personal feel? Personal concern? Yeah. No, I, I think it, it. You don't think it does enough? No, I think it does everything it needs to do. So then you're happy with the language of the policy as long as it's upheld, is what you're I'm saying? I'm voting for the language and the policy, absolutely. Okay. I advocated for two years for it. Okay, and now we're here. So that, to me, is a good thing. You're just worried about how it's going to be implemented. I still struggle with the MCIU and the e-books to get sent to the catalog. I had prior, I filled out forms to have books removed that were part of the catalog that were removed. Yeah. Um, because of... Uh, vernacular that came out through the th through the audiobooks. Yep. None of those books were in this library because the librarian picked them. They were from the MCIU catalog that gets appended to our database, and from the eBooks that gets appended from our database. So I, I still struggle with, with that, somebody with else that, having that access format. To, to add. Correct. Yep. Yeah. So do you maybe then we can have a separate conversation about um, digital materials yeah. and and how how we. We've Gain access fixed, and grant access. Fix the MCIU. Right. It, it now asks the, the MCIU just doesn't have the, they just can't come in. That we talked about last year, a year and a half ago. They just can't come in and add things to a catalog without us right. knowing. Right. The ebook thing, I don't know how you fix that, but it has to, be, there should be a, here are the books we want to add to your catalog, click this button to activate it type of switch in the queue. Right. That's what I mean about the oversight piece of it, the weeding out before it hits live or whatever. Sure. And, and there definitely is a list that comes in, is what I've learned, and we need to read that list in a timely before manner before they become before active. Before they suddenly download. And, I, and again, I need to learn more about how that information is communicated. But um, individuals are well aware, and they're concerned and want to be conscientious about upholding the policy. Yeah, there's a way to prevent the 
ebooks from being pushed through and so that there's a stop gap there and the librarians That's review that, that that mirrors what we have here because we wouldn't accept a shipment of books and then just put them on the shelves without reviewing. We order books and we have control. If the control is not there because it's being pushed, we should be able to stop gap it until we review it. That's what we should be doing. Is that point of view? And if we need to, concern, I think we, that could go to an AR if need, if necessary, so that we could have the procedures in place. Well, and I think uh, that under the, this I policy. think the concern was has been voiced to administration that oh, they would implement yeah. that that piece of it. Do you feel satisfied with that explanation, or are you feeling like you're still not? Oh, well, from the board level, I feel completely satisfied. There's another level that is aggravating the snot out of me, but that's yeah, not a board issue. Yeah, I see issue. it in your face, right? Yeah. yeah. You're going to work on it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Do you want to still talk about it? Oh, no, we're, we're ready to go. We're ready to go. Sure. All right. The next policy meeting, since we're talking about committees, is on April 16th. Please keep an eye out for an agenda. And then the only other one, I think we have wellness, which is on the 9th. That's tomorrow at 345 in the high school library. Uh, those are the two that spring to my oh and there's a community uh, engagement yep superintendent's engagement is at um, 6 30 at the district office on April 24th so uh, hopefully we'll have um, some nice turnout again uh, for folks with that okay moving on to the consent agenda I'm looking for a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented is there a motion Second. and a second okay are there any questions or conversation about the consent agenda all in favor Against? Motion carries. Dr. Campley, education. A 4.01 was the education committee of the whole we spoke about last week. 4.02 through 4.04 .04 were all in consent. And 4.05 was our enrollment report, which we discussed last week. That ends my section. Wonderful. Section uh, five is business, which was Dr. Weston. Dr. Weston is off on a um, eclipse field trip for his himself. Uh, hopefully he enjoyed himself. So I will go ahead and take his section. 5.01 is the Finance Committee of the Whole Report. Uh, 5.02, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 are all on consent. 5.10 is the approval to purchase food service equipment. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. And a second? Second. Any conversation or question? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Against? Motion carries. 511, 12, 13, 14, all on consent. 515 uh, was the report um, on grants and donations that was discussed last week. And uh, 516 is a new item. It is a motion to approve refinishing of the competition gym floor. Is there a motion? So move. Second? A motion and a second. Are there any comments or questions? Um, I just wanted to point out, I did talk to Dr. Russell about the fact that this is only the floor component, but we would be uh, looking to uh, move the bleachers component to um, the board for approval as soon as they have that information all hashed out. Um, so that is still a piece that is pending, but we'll be moving forward. Um, and it is looking to um, be completed over this summer for um, completion for the school year next year. Anyone else? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. Section six, Mr. Fountain. Short and sweet. Section 6.01, a motion for ratification of bills and payroll and authorization of payments. And I so move. So motion, is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion carries. And 6.02, a motion to approve the treasurer's report and financial statements, and I so move. Second. Motion and a second. All in fa uh, any questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Against? Motion carries. 
And that concludes my section. Mr. Fountain, thank you. Section 7, Professional Personnel, Mr. McKinney. Uh, yes, uh, 701, 702, 704, 705, 706, and 707 are all on consent, and 703 has been removed. That concludes my section. Thank you, Mr. McKinney. Mrs. Sadler, Section 8. Uh, 8.01, 2, 3, 4, 5 are all on consent. That ends my section. Thank you, Mrs. Sadler. Mr. Liggett, Governance, Section 9. Section 9.01 is the first reading of the attached policies. Section 9.02, the second reading and adoption of the attached policies. I will would like to move to s approve these policies. Yes, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in, uh, is there any comment or question additionally? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Against? Motion carries. Right. Uh, 9.03 was on consent. 9.04, um, this was added for this week. There is a motion to approve the exception to policy 202 for the allowing for the eligibility of a non-resident student, and I so move. Motion, is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any comment or question? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Against? And the motion carries. Brings us to section 10. We still did okay. Did I miss anything? No. Okay, great. Um, comments from the audience. We have a tail end comment from the audience. Same rules apply as the beginning, three minutes. You state your name and municipality. Is there anyone from the audience that would have something to say? Tim Jagger, Lower Frederick. Um, I was just wondering with the library thing, I know you talked before about having the library list, but uh, with the eBooks, is there gonna also be a library list for the eBooks or is that gonna be aligned with the same books that are actually in the physical library? Um, that was all I was wondering, thanks. Thank you, anyone else? Mayor Skipback. Um, so I'm thrilled with policy 109 in its current form, but I am disgusted with board members who are sitting here who the board members that are new to the board were adamant um, about how it is necessary, and so was the community that supported you, that it was necessary that we have graphic novels, that we have um, inappropriate, which now the administration and all the board is now adopting, that that was all necessary and needed to support all students in our school district. And I, my, I am flabbergasted and furious. And frankly, I've had, um, you know, Mr. McKinney, you stood up here when I was sitting there and said, shame, shame, shame. I feel the exact same way. At least be true to what you say, espouse you believe, and follow through. Dr. Weston, kudos to him, and he's not here tonight. He's the only person the new who a new sitting board member who I have heard say at policy a few months ago he did not want PSBA's new recommendations and did not accept them nobody and everybody else was silent I am just shocked I am pleasantly surprised and pleased because this is what should have been done two years ago and frankly Mr. Saylor and I had multiple conversations with you, Dr. Russell, about changing and moving away from all these graphic things that were that was pouring into our library. And we weren't told, well, that we were told that the, anybody, everybody has different thoughts and feelings on this, and we need to respect that. It was not, well, the community has a standard, and this is what we're going to move towards. It was all open up the floodgates, 
let it in, and parents can, after the fact, after their kids have seen it, then we'll figure it out from there. But I just, I really don't know what to say. My question is, though, so this is a, a recommendation from PSBA. Many of you were so adamant that this not happen. Now it's just coming on in because PSBA has recommended it. There's no pushback. You accept it. My question is, who's running the district, our school board or PSBA? Thank you. Are there any comments from board members? I just have two comments. I want to thank Go ahead, Mr. Sandler. Ms. White. I want to personally thank you and Dr. Russell for working to get um, the gymnasium on the agenda and through the process. It's It's been a really long time and I'm, I'm really excited for the students who get to play on that court next year, um, wrestle on the court, everything. It's just hopefully it's going to look really, really great. Um, I do just want to echo Ms. Ms. White. Um, in a Laura, I think you're doing a great job as a board president. I'm really excited for you and for the next four years in your in your time. But you know, I can't speak for Donna Rowan or or anyone else. But for nine months, our names got drugged through the mud. Board members met at libraries, held up signs, put out mailers that myself and Matt and Kim and people that were running were book banners. This book specifically was talked about ad nauseum in this school district people came in called our homes come to came to my house multiple times and and now everyone's quiet because everyone got elected and i've said this before i'd rather lose and continue to preach what i what i ran against than than just be happy that i got elected and, and move on from something that was so focal to me i'm glad this policy passed i think it's crucially important for public education to be have a moral compass um, but, you know, for nine months, I, myself and my friends were called abhorrent things in this community. Yeah, we felt that too, Mr. Yeah. Saylor. We really felt that um, in a very serious way, me specifically, as the only incumbent running. And so I think my takeaway personally, and I appreciate um, your acknowledgement, because I feel like since December, we have really worked to do a lot of healing as a board of nine. And I feel like we have come a long way, especially in the most recent months. We've had some tough policy meetings. Um, I think we are now in a much different place than we were. And um, I think we all have kind of um, come to the other side of the fatigue that all of us felt. And it was really not um, a healthy way for any of us to, to exist as community members as parents and as board members. And I think that we realized that there needed to be a change made. Um, what I have seen since December is that there is still a lot of anger. And I think that as long as collectively we can continue to uh, represent the demeanor that we expect as a community, we will continue to, um, to heal. But I, I you know, Nothing's really gotten easier except the position that we're taking to, and how, the approach that we're taking. So, um, you know, I think motivations with regards to some of the, you know, the things that are the choices that are happening now are a little are a little different. I don't necessarily view it the same way as you know anybody got their way, and so now it's quiet. I think um, they're just again there. There was like we're on the other side of. Um, I, I don't want it's like it was like PTSD um, we I felt personally very attacked and I've never brought it up at a board meeting because it's not the business of the school district but um, I think both slates it, you know there wasn't anybody that was spared from attacks um, so to say that one side was more attacked than the other is just it's just not that's I don't think that's accurate um, you weren't even running so you know I, I just I think that maybe is again part of that subjective no no I'm not saying attacked I'm saying there was a slate that ran on not banning books, and that's exactly now what we're going to do, thankfully. Oh, I mean, I, again, I think that that is a perspective of, that, that's the stance that you're feeling that that's what's happening, because I think maybe that your delivery of that was always your intention, but I don't know that that was everybody's intention. And I, and I will say, Mr. Saylor, I do respect very often that your intention is one thing, and then it gets twisted, in a more public forum in a way that is not 
a pure intention that you have. And I, I would assume that you agree with that. Um, and, and they hijack a little bit of, of your narrative, if not narrative per se, but you know what I'm saying. They make it a narrative based on what you're trying to put forward. And I, and I would like to see that stop. Dr. Campley. Um, I just wanna to kind of speak to the comment at the end. I think it is easy to kind of come to or make assumptions as to why one may vote a certain way um, and so I, you know, I've always been very transparent with my thoughts and feelings. So I feel that I owe it to the community as to the reason and rationale between why I voted a certain way if there are concerns that it was done for a political reason. So to answer your question, I don't believe in book banning. I never have. Um, but I do believe that, you know, there were some parameters and there was a lot of back and forth and it did take a couple years. And I thought that it finally got to a point where there was some give on both sides and where we could kind of get to a point where we would meet in the middle. I'm not a hundred percent happy with it. Um, but again, part of that is being willing to give a little to get a little right. So, I, I think that some, I am a little disappointed that some books will not be able to be in the library because the parameters tighten things up. And I think certain books might get shipped out a little bit more than I would like. But at the same time, I do understand that idea of give and take and meeting in the middle. And I think that by going back over and over again to policy, that's the point of the policy committee is everybody had say and they went back and forth and, and the, the committee worked hard for years on it that I don't care what end of the political spectrum you're on, I can appreciate the hard work that the committee put into it and what the end result was and it may not be 100% where I wanted it to be, but I'm not going to get everything the way I want it. So in that regard, I was okay with voting yes to this policy. Not because I think that there's a book banner group over here and a non-book banner group over here and I'm going to vote some political way. I'm voting this way because I can appreciate that both sides worked very hard for several years now and this is the consensus that came up and I'm respecting the hard work that everybody put in and I'm saying, okay, we're going to go with it. And I'm hoping that as time comes up, there's going to be pieces that come out of it. Like we found tonight, there was an oops that got through that it was like, why did this get through for a short amount of time? There's going to be things that need to be tweaked. We'll probably have to revisit this over time and, and iron kinks out as they pop up. But I do think that after years of hardship and, and meanness, that I saw across both sides, not one side or the other, across both sides, that it finally got to a point where it was like, we came together and we did what we needed to do as a board, as a whole. And I will say since December, I've actually enjoyed my time working with all members of this board. That is not something I could have said six months ago. Six months ago, it was painful coming here. And I can finally say that we can have a, a, we have been able to have honest deliberation and respect with one another. That was not something that was occurring before. And with that, sometimes we vote a certain way that we may not have said we were going to vote six months prior, but it takes that time and deliberation and thoughtfulness to finally make a decision. Thank you, Dr. Campley. Is there anyone else that has something to say? All right, so the only other thing that I wanted to add before we close, um, we're almost there, we're gonna try for 8.30, um, is that with regards to the finance department, I want to thank you, Mrs. Hurd. Um, since Mr. Weaver's not here, you get to have all of the accolade tonight and all of the diligence that you have um, put into working out the budget to get us to April, understanding that you always do so conservatively and that there are improvements made um, all the way up 
to have the least impact to our tax base as possible, as is every single year um, that I've been on the board. I think that historically, if you've watched budget development um, year over year, we always are in this trajectory. And then by June, we're in a really uh, comfortable place for the community. And we collectively um, thank you. I thank you on behalf of the school board for always working so hard to make that happen um, in a transparent and honest way, um, which a lot of times looks like uh, worst case scenario, doom and gloom of, you know, taxes, everybody's taxes are going up 10%. And we all know that that's not true. So I want you to know that um, we, are, we are recognizing that collectively as a school board that you're in you're working hard to get us there. And I understand we just had wonderful bond refinance. That was great news. And that we're looking forward to next month's report. And hopefully Mr. Weaver will be back with his energy. Does anyone have anything else to add? OK, great. Seeing nothing, we are adjourned. Oh, we had a oh, executive, executive session. session. We talked about um, negotiations and personnel. OK, have a wonderful, yeah, what? Oh, adjourned.